So I'm drawing this fluffy cat for you here, starting with the head. Just finding my way to make those ears. I like getting that nice swoop between the ears so it helps the drawing unify and fit together if I can kind of get both ears in the same rhythm. And I find too that you see what I just did and I'm doing there too. I crisscross the tops of the ears and I find that doing that helps me draw my lines smoother flowing because I'm not focusing on where it stops. I'm just focusing on the angle and then I get rid of those extra bits after. And again swooping down from that right from the ear through the belly. I'm just measuring where I feel that the feet are going to go there. I kind of measure sometimes like that and I just eyeball it too. Whatever I feel like I need to do at the time and it changes. I feel like I'm getting a nice flow around this drawing. Get those legs in, making sure they flow from the rest of the cat. I'd love it if you joined our Facebook community. We have a Facebook group called Cat Drawing and Watercolor Art Workshop and the link is in the description of this video. It's for people that really want to draw cats. You can get some guidance, advice, make friends, post your drawings, help other people with their drawings. Just kind of get those feet in as just kind of ovals at first. Just getting the general shape. It's like a pondering moment here now. I stop and ponder a lot. You know, you really want to think about what you're going to do next. See, I've got the basic round shape of the cat's head. And then I need to get those tufts on the side of the head. So that's what I'm kind of thinking about how I want to do that. And if I've got things in the right place. Just kind of pondering to stop and see how things are going. And you notice I have a lot of line overlap here. But that will disappear more as the drawing progresses. And also it's a learning drawing, which every drawing is really, but especially this preliminary drawing. It's it's practice, it's it's warm up, it's learning my form and shape. And I I don't worry about overlap because if I do it interrupts the flow of things. And I get more learning if I just overlap things like I am here. So just a nice swoop for where those eyes go. Remembering that the eyes go around the curvature of the head. And if you want a 3D looking cat head, then you, you got to pay attention to that. Think of drawing as sculpting. So this is a little pocket that I'm making that the eyes fit into. And I've got lots of parts that guide me. For example, the ears. If I bring it down from the inside of the ears, it gives me the inside of the eyes. And then 
on those edges too. It makes just a nice little pocket for where the eyes will fit neatly in when I do the eyes. Now I'm kind of just refining things and strengthening up the lines that that I feel confident are accurate enough for me. Get that cute little nose in there. And you don't see me drawing a lot of hair. It's a long haired cat, it's a fluffy cat, but I certainly don't draw every hair. And in fact, really, I'm not drawing any hair. I'm just drawing the suggestion of hair. The shape that that hair goes into, I guess more than anything, the shape of the hairdo. And when we see that, our eye will tell our brain that, that it's a cat. And cats are fluffy. And this one is especially fluffy compared to a short-haired cat. It's an old saying that says less is more and it sure applies in drawing. I'm kind of a big picture person myself. I used to be more into the little details but they can be distracting too. You want to think about what is really important in your drawing. And it's different to everybody. Just fitting those eyes into those little pockets I made for them. And I'd love to hear in the comments what you want to learn most. Because that's where I get the ideas for my videos is people's questions. Really thinking about what li lines I add here. I don't want to make it too busy and overworked. I just want the charm of that cute little kitty. This is a great kind of drawing to learn to enhance your art skills. Once you do one of these and then try another, your next one is going to come so much easier to you. Take what you learned from the first one and put it into another. That's the way you learn. That's the way you move forward as an artist. Just get a few whiskers in there. Be sure not to weigh down the face with too many whiskers. All you need is the suggestion of whiskers. You don't need to show every whisker. And the whisker lines don't have to be totally filled in. Ideally, they are not. Because if the pen skips and you miss a bit, that just looks like where the light is hitting it. And that's why I like using old worn out pens that are skipping um, because it makes sure I don't overwhelm my drawing with too much ink for the practice stage anyways. If I'm doing a more polished piece of art then, then I, um, then I use my dipping pens most of the time lately. But I like them to skip too so I let them run low on ink when I want to get that light effect in there. And just a hint of, of the toe lines. I 
I love to add chatter lines. And you notice as I'm doing this, I'm kind of moving around with the flow of the drawing, helping it connect. Let's fill in the eyes in a bit better here. If I do a bit of shading at the top of the eyes to connect that pupil to the top of the eye, um, it kind of gives a cat a little bit more relaxed look. Just feeling the flow of my drawing here, how my parts connect. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss a video. And by all means, make sure you join our free Facebook group, community of aspiring cat artists like you. And again, you'll find the link for that in the in the description below. There's that nice swoop. I like that. The swoop of the paws matches up with the swoop of the chin and cheeks. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.